Welcome back. In this video, I'll teach you everything that you need to know about the changes that happen with pericardial effusion. Pericardial effusion is simply defined as having fluid in between the heart and the heart covering layer. To put it simply, the heart isn't naked in the body, but it's covered with a thin layer, sort of like a coat or a shirt that the heart is wearing. And this coat is adherent to the heart. In certain conditions, some fluid or blood can accumulate in between this coat and the heart. And this is known as pericardial effusion. And this of course isn't ideal because it will compress or prevent the heart from relaxing completely and will sort of compress the heart. And it will also cause some friction in every heartbeat. And this can translate into the ECG and we'll see how to diagnose it in a second. Keep in mind that if you see ECG changes consistent with pericardial effusion, this means that the effusion is very large in volume. In other words, the pericardial effusion does not cause ECG changes unless it's very large. First of all, you will see a low voltage or reduced QRS complex wavelength, meaning that the wave or the electricity of every heart contraction is lower than the normal. And it makes sense because the heart is contracted all around and something is compressing it. So the electricity of the muscles themselves are not very strong. And this translates to low voltage in all of the QRS complexes. To compensate, the heart will try to beat faster to get more blood into the body. And this translates into tachycardia. But sometimes the heart will try to contract a little bit stronger and it will overcome this compression. And this various or periodic cardiac contraction can cause alteration of the QRS complexes. While most of the waves will be suppressed or will have low voltage, some waves will peak through and cause higher QRS complexes. So it is true that most of the QRS complexes will be low in voltage, some of them will be higher than others. This variation in the QRS complex is a key sign of pericardial effusion. To think of the causes, think of anything that can damage the heart, mainly infections, and this can either be infection directly affecting the pericardium or infection affecting the heart and then spreading into the pericardium autoimmune disorders, especially SLE and rheumatoid arthritis, metastatic cancers, trauma, especially blunt trauma to the heart or to the chest, postmyocardial infarction, and this makes sense because if the heart was damaged, it can cause some fluid to accumulate around the damaged area, aortic dissection, and in a large number of patients, it's simply idiopathic. To remember the symptoms, think of the heart as being inefficient. So the patient will have shortness of breath, they will have some discomfort in their chest, they can also experience chest pain or chest fullness, and this can cause low blood going into the brain, and this translates into lightheadedness or feeling the patient might be faint or going into syncope. And right-sided heart failure can cause swelling in the abdomen or legs. The definitive treatment is pericardiosynthesis. We simply insert a small needle into the heart layer and we, and we aspirate this fluid. This has to be done by an expert physician. And if it fails or causes damage to the heart, open heart surgery or thoracotomy might be indicated. In very severe cases, we can simply do pericardiectomy, which is removal of the whole layer around the heart. So any fluid that accumulates will simply accumulate in the mediastinum instead of around the heart compressing the heart. Our ECG course contains all the changes that can occur in an ECG, and it helps you become an ECG expert, so that you can recognize any ECG that you might come across. The course contains everything that might affect an ECG, all the symptoms, the causes, and of course the treatments. It also has plenty of quizzes to test your knowledge and make sure that you cement these informations and be able to answer any question about an ECG. You can access the course using the link in the description or in the pinned comment.